Hello and welcome back lovely people. I have missed you all. Today we're going to be learning about the migration story of the Uber people. Subscribe now for more content like this. In the annals of the Uber history, the tale of the Uber migration unfolds like an epic odyssey. This is the story of a people's quest for a brighter horizon, a narrative shaped by resilience, cultural adaptation, and the indomitable human spirit. In Ebe tradition, the descendants of Noah's three sons are referred to as Ayotome, Akpatome, and Ajatome. After the Noahic flood, the Ajatome group embarked on a quest for better opportunities in a new land. Their journey led them into Africa, where they briefly settled in Egypt before moving upstream along the Nile River, eventually reaching the region known today as Ethiopia. From there, they braved the vast Sahara Desert, finally establishing a settlement they named Khartoum in present-day Khartoum, Sudan. Leaving behind their settlement in Khartoum, the Ajatome journeyed further and eventually found a home in the region of Kuara, nestled between the Niger River and the land of Benin. It was during this period that Chali Akpolomada, who was also known as Goto Zeuze or Marijata or Amedijata, emerged as a prominent leader among them. In Kuara, they absorbed a wealth of cultural elements and skills from the diverse communities they encountered. However, as time passed, tensions began to brew between the upper settlers and the other inhabitants of the region. In search of a new beginning, they embarked on a journey that would lead them to Ileife in Yoruba land. In this new land, they continued to adapt and assimilate, enriching their cultural tapestry even further. During their stay in Ileife, Chali Akpolomada, who was still alive but had become an elderly figure, served as a wise advisor to his people, offering guidance and insights as they navigated their new surroundings. But once again, Circumstances prompted the upper people to make a fateful decision. They made the bold choice to leave Ileife and establish a fresh settlement, which they named Aja, under the leadership of Ashimadi. As time passed, the upper people encountered various challenges and their community began to splinter. Some among them embarked on separate journeys a group of Ebe settlers moved to establish a settlement that would later be known as Dahome, now the modern-day Benin. Others found their home in Ngochie, thus forming three distinct groups or factions. Aja, Dahome, and Ngochie. The group that settled in Ngochie became known as the Dogbo or Dogbuao in the Ebe language. The inhabitants of Ngochi were also an Ebe group that had arrived some time before. All of Ngochi was under the leadership of King Ago Akoli, whose name eventually got shortened to Agokoli. Despite sharing common origins, relations among the Dugos and the people of Ngochi were not so smooth. Tensions escalated during a misunderstanding between a relative or nephew of a Gokoli and a young man from the Dugu community. An elder from the Dugu community who attempted to mediate the situation was pushed to the ground during the confrontation, resulting in injuries. The Dugu elders, angered by this incident, carried the injured elder away. That very night, an unfortunate event occurred in the Dugu camp resulting in the death of another individual. The Dubo elders, seeking for a form of justice, decided to claim that the deceased was the same elderly man who had been pushed earlier.
In accordance with the prevailing laws of the time, the murderer had to be put to death and they demanded that Agokoli hand over his nephew to face execution. The demand for Agokoli to hand over his nephew forced him into a heart-wrenching decision. Reluctantly, he conceded and allowed his nephew to be handed over for execution in the name of justice. The young man's life was tragically cut short. As the Dugo community mourned the loss of the man who had died, an incident occurred during the funeral that would send shockwaves through both the Dugo and Agokoli camps. In a moment of inebriation, an elder from the Dugo community carelessly revealed a significant secret, exclaiming, We are the Dugos, we are the Avengers of the Living. This cryptic statement left the Dugos on edge and left Agokoli's people baffled, prompting them to inquire further about its meaning. Through careful investigation and conversations with those in the know, they soon learned that the de deceased was not the one who had been involved in the altercation with Agokoli's kinsman. This revelation was brought to the attention of King Agokoli and a storm of anger and regret washed over him. He realized that he had been deceived and his own nephew had been unjustly executed as a result. Filled with a deep sense of rage and anguish over the grave injustice that had occurred, King Agokoli was driven to a fateful decision. He issued a chilling command for the execution of all the Dugu elders who had participated in the treacherous ruse. His order was executed with ruthless efficiency, and the Dugu community mourned the loss of their respected elders. In the midst of this tragedy, a glimmer of hope emerged for the Dugus. Through their resourcefulness and determination, they managed to conceal several of their elders, including Chali, Gemedra, and Tegli. These elders, hidden away from the king's wrath, carried with them the wisdom and traditions of the Dugu people, ensuring that the legacy and the culture of their community would endure even in the face of such adversity. Under the iron-fisted rule of Agokoli, the Dubu community faced harsh and relentless labor that tested their patience and strength. King Agokoli imposed grueling tasks upon them, including the construction of a formidable wall encircling the entire community. This mighty wall, constructed at Agokoli's command, stood as a colossal obstacle, measuring 14 feet in thickness and towering to a height of 30 feet. It was this imposing wall that would ultimately hinder the Dugos when they reached a breaking point and decided it was time to escape their oppressive ruler. The resourceful Dugo elders devised a cunning plan to compromise an inconspicuous section of the wall, creating a means of escape. They called upon the women of the community to contribute to this clandestine operation. Over time, the women diligently poured laundry water, dish water, and all manner of waste water onto the wall. The constant moisture began to soften the wall's mud, causing it to gradually give way. On the day chosen for their daring escape, the Dubu community seized an opportune moment. The atmosphere was filled with merriment, marked by music, dance, and no small amount of revelry. As night fell and the festivities carried on, Togbe Chali Yaklomada, their venerable elder, utilized his mystical abilities to cast a potent sleep spell on all those who were not privy to the escape plan. This enchantment cloaked the unsuspecting celebrants in deep slumber and they remained oblivious to the unfolding events throughout the night, not staring until well past midday the following day. Under the cover of the sleep spell, the Dugo elders and their people executed their escape with a stroke of brilliance. They marched out in reverse, carrying their belongings with them, creating an illusion that their footprints suggested they were entering the compound rather than departing from it.
By the time Agokoli and the rest of Ngochie finally stirred and realized the remarkable escape, the Dubus were already long gone, their absence leaving a void in the once united community. Thank you for watching. As always, please like, share and subscribe. Click the links on either side to also enjoy other content like this one. Until later, bye for now.